Hey everybody, this is Stellar Firefly, and in this video we're going to talk about a custom script for having indestructible locked vehicles near plot poles. But perhaps more importantly, we're going to talk in some detail about custom scripting in general, and testing any scripts or add-ons that you may add to your server. Don't worry though, this is still going to be a very beginner level discussion, but we're going to start touching upon several things that you newer admins may want to be aware of as you move forward into more advanced things when making all of these changes and additions to your DAISY server. To list the things we'll cover, I'll first go over a fairly popular script that allows locked vehicles within a certain distance of a plot pole to be invulnerable to damage, a modification that many servers like to have not only for general gameplay balance, but to help prevent griefing on public servers where some jerk with an axe can just run around and wipe out people's potentially expensive vehicles while they're offline. With this invulnerable locked vehicle script, we're going to be touching upon the differences between mods, add-ons, and scripts, a common source of confusion for new admins. And then we're going to also discuss the importance of testing your add-on scripts and mods, not only for obvious bugs, but also to ensure that they at least fit your reason for using them in the first place. The specifics of this video, and especially the steps we'll follow to install the script in the first place, will assume the use of a GTX Gaming DAISY server. But the general ideas that we'll be talking about will be very applicable to DAISY servers and admins of all sorts. And with that, let's begin. This is a screen cap of a very simple script that I found one day when looking for a way to make locked vehicles invulnerable on my own server. I actually can't remember exactly where I found it, though I could probably find it again with just a little bit of searching, but it doesn't really matter anymore and we'll see exactly why later on. For now, I'll just make the script available through a pastebin link in the video description below and give it a name like Old Invulnerability Script. However, spoiler alert, don't use the script on your own server. Well, I mean, you, you could, it does work, and it, a lot of other admins have used it on their own servers, but just follow along with me for now, and as I said, we'll see exactly why later on. But for now, just imagine that we performed a search and found this script recommended and praised by others in... I'm pretty sure it was in the epicmod.com forums. And so we thought, okay, cool, let's install the script. The instructions for installing it were easy enough. It just said to paste those lines right at the bottom of our compiles.sqf file. And, as with many script and add-on installs, the only real trick is to know where to find this file. But I'll just tell you right off. It's in your MP missions map.instance number custom folder. So, first, we'll copy that script into our clipboard so we can paste it in later. We'll then log into our TC admin control panel and go to game services. Then we'll make sure our server is shut down, because we can't make changes to a running server. Then we'll click on the file manager icon and then navigate over to MP missions, then our map folder, in this case instance 11 Chernaris, then our custom folder. And there's our compiles.sqf file. We'll click on the pencil icon across from it to open it up in the editor and just like the instructions said, scroll all the way to the bottom of the file and paste it in. Just like I mentioned in the other videos, even though it says to add it to the very end, we'll add it to just above this initialized equals true line, just to be a good scripter. We'll click on the save button at the very top and make sure that it says the file was saved. Yeah, okay, that was super easy and stuff that we can do in our sleep by now, right? But remember one of the biggest rules of good programming, always test your changes. So we'll head back out to our control panel, fire up our server, log in, and let's put this cool new script through some basic tests. So, here we have ourselves a lockable vehicle currently unlocked. We'll check the damage level, fire a shot into the glass, and check again. It's damaged, as expected. Let's lock it and try that again. Even more damage, also as expected. Remember that our vehicle shouldn't be invulnerable unless it's both locked and within 50 meters of a plot pole. Now let's drop down our plot pole. Well, after we're out of combat anyway. Let's do some movie magic and fast forward. Okay, we'll unlock the vehicle and give it a shot, then check damage. Yep, more damage, just as it should be. Now the first real test. 
will lock it up and fire a shot. No damage. Just to be sure, let's frickin' unload. And... no damage. Okay, so we're all done, and it's working just fine, right? Yeah, well, if it were that simple, then would I be spending all this time in a video pointing it out to you? One important thing that I've learned during my years in software quality assurance is that you have to test as many possible situations and combinations as possible, because it's always best for you to find the bugs before your users do. And so, the next logical step here would be to now unlock the vehicle, check the damage level, and then fire another round into it, just to show that it can be damaged again. No damage. Not quite what we were hoping for, was it? But wait, you may say. Maybe it's just because we're still in the plot pull radius, and it stays invulnerable until we leave, which I suppose would make a little bit of sense. Well, that's easy enough to test. Let's drive out a ways, far enough that we're absolutely certain that we're outside of the 50 meter invulnerability range of our mod, and then let's try that again. We'll fire on the tires this time, because we know that they'll immediately start to deflate on every hit. And we'll use a few more bullets this time too, just to be sure. Yeah, I don't think so. There are a couple of lessons to learn here. First, even the best and most highly praised add-ons and scripts can have their share of bugs. Maybe people started to say good things about it before they gave it a good testing, or even before they used it for very long. Because, admit it, if you hadn't gone through the second part of the testing yourself that we showed here, then you probably would have thought that it worked just great too. Or, maybe the script worked just fine with the previous version of DayZ or the Epic mod, but now it doesn't work quite so well in the current version. Maybe it's one of those other add-ons that we're using that's causing it to mess up, in which case it's actually an incompatibility issue, and you won't be able to use both at the same time. Or maybe it could be working as intended, just not like you were hoping for. Well, yeah, okay, in this case that's highly unlikely. But, with some other add-ons, that's a very real possibility, something we call suitability for a purpose, where the developer wanted it to work in a certain way, but that it just doesn't work for you how you were hoping it would. And sometimes you just don't realize it until you've tried it and tested it for a while. For all of these reasons, it's always a good thing to test your add-ons right after you've installed them. And of course, there's the obvious reason that if something went wrong and you made a mistake with the installation, then the sooner you find out, the easier it'll be to find the error. If you installed, say, four or five add-ons at a time, and then your server crashes on startup, well, good luck figuring out which of those four or five add-ons is causing the problem. Now, just a brief little segue here, because I know some of you newer admins may be a bit confused about something. It may seem like we've been using the terms add-on, script, and mod pretty much interchangeably for most of this video, and in some situations that can apply to all three, I pretty much have been. But there is actually a difference, although it can be a bit vague in some contexts. I won't go into too much detail because the discussion probably should have its own video. But, in general, a mod stands for a modification to DayZ. But in the most common context of DayZ customization, it doesn't usually refer to just any modification. A mod is a major or overarching modification to DayZ, generally the really big stuff that makes significant changes. Some of the mods you may be familiar with are DayZ Epic, DayZ Overwatch, and DayZ Origins. An add-on is also technically a modification to the DayZ game, but the term typically applies to changes that run alongside, and sometimes even require, a mod, or may be able to run alongside different mods. Add-ons also try to be as self-contained as possible, so that servers may be able to run many different add-ons all at the same time and with very little or no changes, which you generally can't say about mods. Scripts, on the other hand, typically refer to minor and often manual additions and changes to code in existing files that are either part of a mod or an add-on, or files that are specifically meant to hold scripting changes themselves. 
So by this definition, this change that we're doing to make locked vehicles invulnerable when near plot poles is considered a script. It's just a little clump of code that we add to the compiles.sqf file, and that's it. No other files to add or edit. We could go into more detail about mods and scripts and add-ons, but as I said, it's probably best left to its own video. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, well, we're still kind of left with a script that doesn't quite do what we'd like it to do, huh? As we mentioned, maybe it's outdated, or maybe it's an incompatibility or something. You didn't think I'd end this video and just leave you with a less than useful script, did you? Those of you who checked the video description already probably already noticed a second pastebin link to something called, I don't know, I'll probably call it like new invulnerability script or something. I won't bore you with technical details since this isn't a coding tutorial, so suffice it to say that the original script that I grabbed from the forgotten thread had a little logic error in it. It sets a flag in the vehicle that makes it invulnerable when it actually checks for damage. But once the vehicle's marked as invulnerable, the server never bothers to check for damage anymore, and so it never gets to run the code that removes the invulnerable state later on. So I made a little logic tweak to the script and made a pastebin link to this new version. We won't go through the steps to install it all over again because they're exactly identical. Just be sure to use the code for the new script and not the code from the old script. And if you learned anything from this video tutorial, then even after applying the changes with the new script, you should have still fired up your server and tested it all out. Maybe you'll find a new bug. Probably not, because I've tested it as well, but maybe. But also possible, maybe you'll find that this new version still isn't what you're hoping that it would be. For example, did you think to do the proper test to find out that you can make a locked vehicle invulnerable even if it's parked near somebody else's plot pole, not just your own? Maybe that's not what you want, and so you'll have to go find a different script or add-on that'll work the way you want it. Once again, suitability for a purpose. And with that, thank you all for joining me and watching this video tutorial. I sincerely hope that it was helpful to some of you, especially many of you new DAISY admins. Please don't hesitate to like or subscribe if you feel so inclined, and as ever, good luck, have fun, and check your changes.